Hello and welcome to the latest video, video 4 in the Arduplane Onomatic F405 wing flight controller in an AR wing with TBS Crossfire. Now if you've been watching along with the series already you'll have seen us gone through quite a bit of stuff. We've gone through the ideas and actually put the thing together. We flashed the flight controller with Arduplane and we've gone through the initial setup as well. We've tested everything on the bench so we know that it all works and there shouldn't be any nasty surprises or if there are when we installed it into the actual wing itself we've probably made a mess of the wiring. Now in the last video we spent a bit of time thinking about the video transmitter and how we were going to connect that up to the crossfire receiver and making sure that was all working too. So this video we're going to concentrate on actually getting all of that technology into this AR wing. Now one of the things that a lot of pilots have had a problem with with this AR wing is getting the center of gravity in the right spot particularly when you have an action camera in the nose. Now I've installed my Runcam 5 in the nose. This is the configuration of how I want to fly it. So that means that I need to make sure there's as much weight as I possibly can get at the back of the wing to keep the balance point at the back half of those center of gravity marks under the wings. And I've managed to do that quite successfully. So let me show you where I've put everything. The building of this wing has been a little bit of a learning experience. So let me pass on some of the tips and tricks that I've learned for each of these system parts just so if you're following along you can kind of avoid some of the umming and ring and head scratching that I've been doing while I've been putting this all together and hopefully get to the end and have it so that it balances beautifully on the center of gravity and everything fires up. Hopefully by the end of the video we will be in a position where we can go on and do the final setups for RD Pilot before we go out and maiden. So the first job is to install the Crossfire receiver. Again, it's a nano on the little daughter board, which gives us four PWM outputs. One has been used for SBUS to talk to the flight controller, and then we're using two others for CRSF so that we can configure the Team Black Sheep Unify Evo transmitter that I've decided to use instead of the Foxeer one that we started looking at at the beginning of the series. Now we have absolutely bags of room inside the model. So what I've done is I've just popped the receiver using some double sided foam tape by the side and then there's enough of a lead on the supplied Immortal T antenna to run it up behind the flight controller and install it onto the hump of foam that's in front of the motor. Just a couple of things we need to be careful of in here. Uh, the way that the canopy plugs into position, we're going to have to make sure the Immortal T is far enough back. So it's going to have to be about two and a half centimeters or about an inch back to make sure it clears that notch that keeps the canopy closed at the back. And the way I did it, I just used a very new X-Acto blade, cut a line in until it was far enough back, and then dug a small pocket out and pushed the Immortal T antenna in with a dab of glue. Then glued that seam back up put a bit of blue painter's tape over it to keep it all together and left it alone for a couple of hours to set up. So that's nice and secure and well out the way. The next job is going to be how we're going to install the GPS. Now with everything kind of plugged in here, we can see that it's going to have to go off to the right hand side. Uh, we played with that wing a couple of videos ago and I used the compass trick to try and figure out where there was the minimum amount of interference. Now, because the Immortal T antenna is in the middle, the idea is that we can have the GPS out on one wing and potentially have the video transmitter and antenna out on the other wing. The video transmitter runs a little bit warm, so I'm going to need to make sure that it's in decent airflow. But for now, let's concentrate on the GPS. Now, we're going to have to take it out of this plastic puck and put it probably about here on the wing. So if I just kind of test fit where I'm getting the no magnetic interference, the cable is about the right length. And interestingly, if I flip the wing over, there is the channel that's already pre-cut for the servo. Now it's a shame that they've really stuck in the cover for the servo lead because I can run the cable down there. But with a bit of smart positioning, I think we can take advantage of it. So I'm just going to double check again with the compass just to make sure that I'm going to pop it in the best possible place. We want it far enough away from the motors that are actually form part of the servo. And we also want it far enough away from any magnets of hatches and other things too. 
Once I'm happy, I know where it needs to be. Then what I'm going to do is just remove the screws from the cover on the GPS and then I'm going to press the bottom of the GPS into the top of the wing because what I want to do is just for the chips that are slightly proud on the bottom of this GPS unit to kind of just slightly depress the foam at the top and then I can use that same sharp exacto knife that we used to cut the slot for the Immortal T antenna for the Crossfire system to just whittle away a little bit of foam so the board of the GPS sits completely flat. One thing I am doing while I'm doing this is also making sure that it is in position so that the cable will actually drop down and I can run it in the same channel that the servo cable is already running in and that way I don't have to take it out the bottom of the wing and cut a separate channel like I thought I would do. It makes for a much much neater installation and the cable that's being used here to, to connect the GPS and compass to the central bay is already shielded so that's going to make sure that there's no dodgy signals coming in as well. So now I've managed to get that all threaded through, the next job then is to just put it in place. So I'm going to use hot glue to secure this GPS compass arrangement, making sure that the arrow that's pointing front is pointing towards the direction of travel. Uh, just triple check that before you get the hot glue gun out. I'm going to hot glue this into place and then I'm going to use a couple of dabs of foam safe glue and snap the cover over the top just to make it nice and neat. Then it's just a case of putting the wing back on the model and putting the cable and back into position and putting those DuPont servo style connectors back on the Matek. Now we've done that, the next job is to install the video transmitter. Now one of the things that I'm not sure about here is where is how the center of gravity is going to work because at the moment I've got that GPS out there on the wing um, so I'm really not sure how the balance is going to be not only front to back but also side to side. My, now my initial thoughts were to install the Unify Evo out on the left hand side but actually testing where it balances the, the weight of the additional foam and the camera on the other side from the GPS is meaning that the wing is balanced laterally. So I don't have to worry about trying to put it in place. Now there is a really nice spot underneath the canopy that we could put it in line with the center of the wing and also put it in an awful lot of airflow. So what I've done, I've just got a piece of metal here and bent it into position. I'm going to double sided foam it into the spot there and the idea is is that that will mean that the air coming in through that opening will flow all around this video transmitter and help keep it nice and cool. So if I put it as far back as it will go that will help my central gravity and it should be in pretty good airflow too. So I'm going to keep it in place with a cable tie and hopefully by having it mounted off and against this metal little support hopefully that's going to help keep it all cool. So if I just position the uh, the pieces roughly where they need to be and check the balance then the center of gravity is almost where I need to be. It's fractionally two or three millimeters towards the nose so although it's fine side to side the battery could probably be moved back probably 10 millimeters and it would be absolutely spot on for balance. I'll install a much bigger battery strap because there's all this room in front of the flight controller that will allow me to position the battery to give me the correct CG. Next job which is worth talking about, slightly odd one this, I installed a regular piezoelectric buzzer onto this, onto the buzzer pins of the Matek and it doesn't work. Uh, you have to use the proper Matek buzzer, um, I actually got this one from Hobby RC so thanks to those guys because I ordered it and it was here the next day and what I've done is soldered it as per these pictures. There's actually a diagram showing how you put this together for iNav and it seems to work exactly the same way for Ardu Pilot, which is great. So all I've done is I've just soldered a servo lead onto it. I have then covered it with a bit of heat shrink, making sure that the opening isn't covered with heat shrink because that's where the noise is going to come out. And I've just popped that in the opposite side from the receiver so that it's going to sound. Now the buzzer itself doesn't work in exactly the same way as a standard piezoelectric buzzer on the omnibus that we've already built. But once the flight controller has booted, got a 3D lock and is completely happy, then it does do the standard Ardu Pilot trilling noise to let you know that everything is good. So this is what it looks like with all the components installed now. I've also added a couple of 
three inch leads for the connections to the video transmitter just so I can get the canopy on and off and with the battery in this position a 2200 battery in this position I'm getting perfect central gravity just towards the back half of the CG marks under the wing everything is fitting nice it's still got absolutely bags of room there's only a couple of things that we need to do before we plug the power in and check everything is going to work so if I just plug the USB cable in we can jump into Ardu Pilot two things we need to do in here First of all, we need to go and change the servo outputs because S1 and S2 on this Matec F405 wing are dedicated for the motor outputs and S3 and S4 are going to be for the servos. So if you remember when we came in here, we had it set in a slightly different way. So I just need to go through here, set output one to be the throttle, disable output two, and then set output three and output four to be the elevons left and right respectively. We will double check this in the next video as we go through the final commissioning to just make sure we've got everything the right way around and that they're moving in the right direction as well. We'll probably find that one of these is reversed and we can just click the reverse button to, uh, to the left of where I'm setting up all of these pieces and that should sort it out. But we'll do that next time. The only other thing that we need to do then is to set up the voltage pieces. You may have noticed in the on-screen display when we looked at it last time that the voltage and current meter were not being shown and that's by default it appears to be disabled. Now I'll put a link to this little um, page here. This is a fantastic page that has loads of really important information in. I'm surprised when I'm recording this video that this information isn't in the Ardu plane page for the Matec F405 wing but again I'll put a link below to the matecsys.com website where this is but we are going to have to go in and we're going to have to change the battery monitor type to 4 then we're going to have to save those settings back and then go through and change each one of them in turn so what we need to do is go into the full parameter list if we type in bat underscore and we do a quick search we'll find at the moment there is only one thing set and that's because it's basically disabled we're going to have to set that to 4 and then say write params and then say OK. And then what I did was reboot the flight controller. And then when I came back in, I was able to just work through, search for each of those parameters and make sure that they were set correctly as per that little diagram that we've just looked at. So that is the wing built. It is all together. Central gravity is right. Everything's connected. Join me next time where we will do the commissioning of RD Pilot. Make sure the servos are working in the right direction. Make sure everything locks up and make sure that we can arm it because no doubt there'll be a few things that aren't right. We'll have things like the RC min problem that we had last time that we'll have to work through. But by the end of the next video, we'll be ready to go out and do some test flying. But we are almost there. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.